So Paul, actually, our, our model's kind of coming together. We now have three solid constraints, including that last one, which is telling us a little bit about what's going on the inside. It must allow for heat flow to come to the outside. It's less about the temperature, but not so much about the densities on the inside. That's true. But we also have a very similar constraint for the density. Okay. Now, or particularly the pressure. Okay. Now, pressure is the cumulative effect of all the impacts. So let's imagine this is a layer of the sun and we've got yep. the gas underneath it and we let it move around. You'll see the molecules are constantly bouncing off it. And it's happening to you as you stand yep. there. Atoms are hitting you all the time. Any idea how big that force is? Uh, feels like it can't be that big. Not falling over. It's actually 100,000 newtons worth of force per square meter. That seems like a lot. Yeah, that's uh, 10,000 kilograms. 10 tons of force on every square meter of your body. God, why am I not collapsing? Well, on Earth, this incredible pressure balances. And I've got 10 tons of force on my front, but luckily for me, I also have 10 tons of force on my back. Ah, so we're kind of getting pushed from both sides, keeping us, well, not from being squashed. Likewise, I've also got the same pressure inside. The air in my lungs is applying that pressure in outwards that balances the pressure outwards. So on us and Earth, even though there actually is this huge much, much of pressure, it's balanced out so we're not being squished or squashed. It's a bit like the electromagnetism we talked about. Yep. If you had 1% too much charge, there'd be enormous forces, but because the charges are so balanced, you don't notice it. This is another huge force. This pressure force is absolutely enormous, but because it's so beautifully balanced, we don't notice it. Does the sun notice it? Well, if the pressure is the same everywhere, there's no force. But if you look at it, let's divide the sun up into shells. Yep. Each shell is going to weigh something. That's right. And that's going to try and pull it down. And it doesn't fall down. The shells of the sun just stay there. So there must be some other force to balance it. Yes, right, because otherwise it would collapse in on itself. That's right. So the fact that the outer layers of the sun are still there and haven't all fallen into a black hole in the middle tells you there must be some upward force that's balancing their weight to just hold them there. And it has to at least equal the pressure on the outside, like with us. Yes. Yeah. So we can do a, a force balance. Okay. All right. So if you take any particular layer, it's going to have a gravity force down. Yep. It's going to have a pressure from the gas on the outside pushing downwards. And there must be a pressure from the inside pushing upwards. Okay. And the pressure from the inside must be more than the pressure from the outside to balance the gravity. That's right, because if these two have to equal this, you can't have that being the same as that, otherwise gravity will come pulling that star down. Right, so there needs to be a pressure gradient. The pressure needs to go up as you go into the sun. So as you go inside, there has to be more pressure. Yes, and it's actually the same on Earth. Like yeah. if we take a, like, let's take a, a meter cube of air here, yep. that weighs about a kilogram. Yep. That's about the same as a bottle of water. If I take a bottle of water here and drop it, it's going to fall. Mm -hmm. This air doesn't fall. Why doesn't it fall? You can talk about, well, the air gets, yep. gets in the way, but what that really means is there's more pressure underneath than there is at the top. Okay. So the air pressure up here is just a little bit, that's so right. one kilogram less than the air pressure down the bottom, and that's what allows this cube of air to stay there. That's right, and uh, I guess if the air was really pressurized or really high above us, we'd be squished on the surface. Yeah, so this is why air gets thinner as you go up in the Earth's atmosphere. It's every, the pressure at every layer supports all the air above it. Okay. So we've got about 10 tons of air above you, which is why you've got 10 tons of pressure on you. Okay. You are supporting on your shoulders. I, this is shoulders. the burden I've been feeling. Uh, yes. So, and the sun, it means that the density must get up. Okay. Now, the, uh, the pressure must go up. Now, the pressure could be caused by increasing density. You can get the same pressure by having a high dense gas at a low temperature. So we have a lot of stuff, but just slowly moving. Yes, because the low temperature means the atoms are moving slowly. Or it could be you have a small amount of stuff going really fast. And both those will give you the same so, amount of force. So, so how do we figure out which one is it? Well, it's a bit tricky. Um, but what you need to do is you need to come up, probably the density is going to increase as you go in. It could just be the density is the same as the temperature increases. Okay. Um, so if we just knew that the pressure imbalance, we don't know whether that's because the density goes up or the pressure goes up. It could be either of the two. That's right. Most likely it's a combination, but the density and the temperature go up a bit. But now but we also know that the temperature must be sufficient to allow things to flow outwards. So now we've got an extra constraint. We've got the total mass, mass match observation, the total power mass match. Temperature gradient must allow steady heat flow everywhere, and the pressure gradient, which will depend on the temperature and the density, must balance gravity everywhere. So now that as we're building our constraints up, in fact, these further constraints are being even more constrained because they can't violate these other ones. That's right. So now it's starting to be rather tricky. Can we actually come up with a model that fits all of these things? And there's one more constraint we should add, 
which we know that at the outside it's going to have zero density. It must start from zero at the outside because that's space. That's right. And we know the temperature at the surface is 5,778 Kelvin. So we've got a fixed point at the outside, this temperature and zero density. And the pressure and temperature must increase as you go inwards in just such a way as to, and they must get the total mass, the metric observation, total power. So that's a lot of constraints. That's right. So we must start at this point and slowly at some rate add pressure and temperature to get us this total. That's right.